With all the basics in place, it's time to take a look at some of the more advanced properties that you can find in the Umbraco back office and use for your website. In this video, I'll be introducing you to three new properties. We'll be covering the grid editor, nested content, and finally, the image cropper. Let's do it. Now, as you might notice, I've taken the liberty for the purpose of this video to extend on our website a bit. Don't worry, I'll take you through all the changes as we go through this video. The first thing we'll talk about here is the grid editor. It's a module-based and very flexible editor that you can configure and customize in order to give your content editors a lot of creative freedom when they create and work with content on your website. Of course, you get to decide just how much freedom they actually have. I've already configured a grid editor and set it up to be used on our content pages. So let's take a look at the Learn on Braco page here. At the top, the title box composition, nothing changed there. But down here, in the content group, this is where we have the grid editor. As you can see, it kind of looks like a grid with a bunch of different modules or boxes with different kind of content. When configuring the grid editor, you have control over what kind of content can be put into which boxes. And of course, you can also configure how many boxes can be added to a row and how big they should be and so forth. Now let's take a look at the configuration for this grid editor. And we'll go to the info tab and up here, open the document type. And you can see here in the constant group that we have a grid layout. So let's click on the cogwheel here and here to open the configuration. When configuring a grid layout, you have a lot of options. So let me just go through them really quick. First up here, you get to decide how many different kinds of layouts you want available to your editors. Then you get to configure the various rows that should be available. As you can see here, I've configured four rows at the moment. So let's take a look. We have the one called image and text, for example, if I click on that here. First we have the name and the label, and then down here is how many columns I have in the row. So if we click on the first one here, you see it's four columns wide. And down here, I've configured which kinds of editors, which kind of content can be added into this particular box. In this case, only an image is allowed here. Now, let's check the big one here. This is eight columns wide, and the rich text editor and the quote editors has been made available for this box. So you can at all times make these boxes smaller or bigger by adding or removing columns. Just keep in mind that one row is always 12 columns wide. So if you add more than that, it will jump to the next row. All right, we'll close this one. So just like the image and text was configured, I've configured these three as well. There's one with three different columns, there's one with a single column, and so forth. How many of these and how you configure them is entirely up to you. So I will encourage you to play around with it and see what fits your needs. So if we scroll a bit further down, you can define the max number of columns in a row. Then you can also configure what kind of settings the editors can change, which styling they can edit, and here is a toolbar section where you can define what kind of options should be available in the rich text editor in the grid. And all the way here at the bottom, there's a bunch of other options for defining dimensions, adding different style sheets, setting the mode and so forth. I won't be covering any of these configurations in detail here as we have an entire chapter about the grid editor. I'll be linking to it below this video. All right, I've now shown you the configuration of the grid layout. Now this editor might look advanced and it comes with a bunch of configuration options, but rendering it on the front end requires only a single line of code. Let's head over to our content page template and take a look. We'll open it from here. All right, and here it is. There's like almost no code at all in this file. That's because we only need to add the alias of our field in this method which will then take care of all the rest. That's super simple, right? Now there are a few other parameters you can configure here. This would mostly be relevant when you're customizing the grid editor via code. 
you can read much more about that in our documentation about the grid editor, which you can find the link to below this video. Now I think it's time that we take a look at how the grid renders on the front end. So let's close the template here and check out the front end. As you can see, we have the boxes that was configured here in the content section, almost in a one-to-one, -one, what you see is what you get kind of way, right? That's the whole idea with the grid editor. It gives your content editors freedom to set up the page however they like without having to code. Okay, that was the grid editor. Next up, I'm gonna show you how to use the nested content editor. Nested content is a way to create content nested inside another content item. Basically, it's as the name indicates, a way to nest content within another piece of content. Okay, let's see how it works. So back to the content section. I've created a new page here called the team. It's based on a document type also called team page. Now, except for all the standard groups here at the top, which you're already familiar with, what's interesting is the team members group down here. It consists of a single field, which is the nested content editor. Each of these is essentially a piece of content, but it's created here on this content page. So instead of having a separate page for each team member, I've nested them on here instead. So if we take a look at one of them, as you can see, it has a bunch of fields, some text, and even a little checkbox down here. So with these nested content items, it's easy to add new ones, remove, copy, and you can even sort them as well if you want. Now let's take a look at the configuration for this editor. We'll start with the document type of here. Now let's find the property which is down here. Click on the cogwheel here and here. Okay. Now let me just zoom out a little bit. Here we go. The nested content needs to be configured with at least one element type. An element type is essentially a document type, only it doesn't have a template and can only be used as nested content. The element type is defined here, the group and template as well. Now template in this context is the alias of the property that should be used as the title or name for the item. So here it would be the team name property from the team member document type that's used as a title. Okay, and then down here there's a bunch of other configuration options to customize the property even further. All right, now let's take a look at the team member element type as well. So we'll close this one and just zoom in a little bit again. And we'll head to the settings section. This card changes. Here we go. So you'll notice I've created a new folder in our document type structure here called elements. And in here, a team member document type. So as you can see, it pretty much looks like any other document type with a bunch of different properties configured. Now, if we have a look at the permission tab up here, here you will spot the difference. This document type is configured as an element type, which means it is to be used as nested content instead of pages in the content tree. Now let's see how the front end looks as well. So back to the content item here and find the link. You can see that the team members are displayed in nice little tiles. The items from the nested content is rendered in a very similar way to how we rendered out the blog posts earlier. It uses a for each statement that will iterate through all the items it can find. You can of course learn more about how to work with and how you can configure this editor in the documentation about nested content. There's a link to it below this video. Okay, and finally, notice how all these images are exactly the same size. That could have been done with a lot of image editing, cropping, etc. But not here. I've used another of the property editors built into Umbraco, the image cropper. With this property, we can define certain crops, and then whenever an image is uploaded, you can use it in all the various crops that we've defined. Okay, let me show you how that works. We'll head back to the back office again, and this time we'll go to the media section. In here is all the images that we've uploaded so far. Whenever an image or another media item is uploaded, through let's say a media picker, the image will be available from here as well. Now let's take a closer look at one of these images. 
we'll take the one here. Notice these little images over here to the right? Those are all crops that I've defined using the image cropper. Now, if we select one of them, let's go with the banner, we can even define how this specific image would behave with each crop. So we can zoom in a bit. We could move it around if you want that as well. Okay, and when we're happy with how it looks, we click done and it'll be saved. Now you might also notice the little pink dot here in the middle of the image. That's the focal point. It gives you an easy way to define the most important part of the image. This is another way to ensure that no matter which crop is used, it's always that part of the image that will be in focus. Let's go to the settings section and take a look at this image cropper I keep talking about. We'll discard these changes. The image cropper is a predefined data type that's used as a property editor on the default media type. This means that it will be used on all images that's uploaded through a media picker. As with all editors in Braco, you can of course create multiple image croppers and use them where it makes sense in your setup. Now let's find the image cropper here on the data types and image cropper. Now here are the three crops that you saw on the image we looked at before. They're defined by a name and two dimensions, width and height. As simple as that. By using the image cropper, you and your content editors avoid having to spend more time on image editing than necessary. It really is a great time saver. That was all I had for you in this video. You now know a little more about three of the more advanced property editors that comes with Umbraco. To learn more about each of them, follow the links to our documentation, which you'll find below this video. In the next video, I'll briefly introduce you to a feature called Partial Views, which we will use to add a final touch to our website. That was it for this video. I'll see you in the next one.